Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be getting our mob farm automated and upgrading our power. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, when we last left off, we were running into some power issues, and I think we might be able to fix those power issues very soon. Um, I do want to go ahead and get this thing pumping back into our main power system. But as you can see, I've been doing some alloying. Um, I've been using this alloy smelter, which has been very handy, um, for making things like Electrum, making things like Invar, and also some Bronze. Some things that are used when we go to working, or get into working with Thermal Expansion. As you can see here, I did make some Magmatic Dynamos. I was in dire need of power in our, our generators that I switched to. These heated redstone generators consume redstone way too fast. It's just, it's way too fast. I don't even know how, I don't know how that could be useful. Um, I, I, I tried, I tried to give them a shot, but man, they just failed me. Um, so what we have here is magmatic dynamos. They are upgraded to their first kit. So when we take a uh, look for kit, you can see right here, hardened upgrade kit is the one I just made for it. And that's what I was working on the alloying for. And so each one of these are upgraded. And then inside of those, once you get the upgrade on it, um, you can set here and make an auxiliary transmission coil. This is different than an acceleration coil. This is the transmission coil, which increases the output of RF. As you can see, each one of these are generating that RF. If I take this out, it's 60. It pretty much doubled it by putting that in there. The default without the kit is 40. Whenever I put the kit on, it upgraded it to 60. When I added this, it bumped it up to 120. These things are probably going to be your best generators for lava. Um, for getting power out of lava anyways. And uh, I want to upgrade these guys even further because technically we need close to 500 RF in order to be producing enough power to run everything smoothly. And I would love for this to be running off of this without any power issues. That is the goal. Uh, for that, I am going to need to work on a couple other machines because we can't go into this without some hardened glass. And you can't get hardened glass without an induction smelter. So we are going to need to work on an induction smelter, which isn't actually that hard to make, but it is going to push us into thermal expansion. So let's take a look at the, uh, the machine we're going to need. So an induction smelter is kind of easy to make. Um, we're going to need what three gears here, which means we're going to need a little bit of cobble or a little bit of stone. We have 16 in here. Probably need to get more cooking to be honest. Let's get more thrown in there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna make a few gears, get that induction smelter, smelter up and rolling. Uh, invar, we need an invar gear, and then we need two copper gears. Very simple. All right, and we need a redstone reception coil, some sand, and a machine frame, which is gonna require tin gear. We almost forgot about that one. We just need to wait for a second. Sometimes, like, packs like these hang up for a second. I don't know why it does that, but it's probably a uh, garbage, like a garbage collection issue. There's a machine frame, and we should have everything to make an induction smelter. Nice. I'm going to remove our alloy smelter temporarily. Place the induction smelter. Now, this requires pulverized... Um, it requires two things. It requires pulverized uh, obsidian which we can get that in a very specific way. I'm going to show you how to do that later. And then we also need uh, lead. So we need pulverized lead, which we can get here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off, turn the auto input off. We'll throw lead in here and let that get pulverized. And we should be good there. Um, and if we take a look at that recipe, like hardened glass. I don't know if it's, that's fused quartz. We need glass. I don't even know where the base, they're hardened tin glass. There's hardened glass in general. Where is a good recipe for it? What is this used for? And then induction smelter? Here it is. So yeah, pulverized obsidian, four of them, and lead. But we can actually get pulverized obsidian pretty easy. We don't have to actually put it through our machine. We can use a stone hammer. The stone hammer will actually pulverize obsidian for us. Look at that. We get obsidian dust. And I I think this is ore dictionaried. 
We're going to find out when we take a look at this lead over here. When we throw this lead into the induction cylinder, we're going to find out if this stuff is ore dictionary. If not, we're going to have to pulverize a different way. But let's throw this in here. Is that going to work? It's going to work. Nope. Okay. So if that doesn't work, <laughs> at least we found out. We can go ahead and throw our obsidian in here. And this will grind it down for us. Yeah. It's not that difficult. So I realized that my problem was that I didn't have power. This actually does work. So we don't have to even have our... We don't have to have the obsidian going over here. Like, it doesn't... That doesn't have to be a thing. Ah, the tiny progressions way does work. So that saves us a little bit of time. And that should... Well, it should have. Does that... Did that output into this for real? It did. How interesting. Let's close off all those. <laughs> we don't want that work. We don't want that doing that. Um, but yes, that is getting us uh, everything we need here. So let's go ahead and make some more of this. There's that. It does use four at a time. I'm just going to get a few. Keep that in here. Once this does its thing, we'll have some more. All right. So this is going to help us make the better kits. Right? We made Electrum. We need Silver. So let's work on that. So I'm going to make a couple of kits for right now because that's all we have enough glass for. And there's the kits. Now it's showing we don't have it because it defaults to the copper ones. But if we do this, then it will work. And so let's try this. What does this do whenever we upgrade this? Well, it bumped it up from 120 to 160. So we should be able to bump it even further with another one of these auxiliary transmission coils. Um, in which we're going to need a little bit more redstone, I think, for. Auxiliary transmission coil. Let's get that made. So an auxiliary transmission coil. Which is just going to require silver. Uh, it actually is pretty cheap. To be honest, I'm going to go ahead and make two of them because we're going to have one for this. So let's go ahead and add it to it. What does that bump it up to? 240 RF a tick that we're getting from this thing now. Let's bump this one up and we'll throw that in there. 240 RF a tick on that bad boy. Oh, yeah. Now, this may be consuming lava a little bit faster. It looks like it, it looks like it's handling it. Looks like our lava generation is definitely handling it. Perfect. All right, so we have it, the ability to upgrade one more time. And let's go ahead and do that. And this is actually getting us some pretty decent power. And like I said, this is going to maintain, and it should maintain our other machines. Looks like we need a stone gear. Oh, we need stone. Keep forgetting we're out of stone over here. Stone, stone gears. I really hate that stone gear recipe. I wish it was like every other pack I've played where the stone gear is not there. But that's just what you have to live with. There's that. And last but not least, we can't use that recipe because, yeah. It's the only problem with like this crafting. And voila. And we need to make our coil. Make that bad boy. And now we should be getting, what is it, 240 a piece? Why is that bumped down to only being out? Why is it? Oh. Oh, we've hit max on this. So let's, let's open this back up. So that should go back up to 240. So we're looking at about 720 RF a tick. Is what we should be pushing. 720 RF a tick per generator. I don't know why it goes up and down. I think it's because once this leaves. I think we're, oh yeah, we're generating more power than everything can use. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, so wait, this is, this is still receiving power. So what is the deal with that? 
Is it because of this max buffer here? I'm kind of just wondering. It looks like these generators, it's because these generators are probably doing enough work that it doesn't really have to bother. Huh. I'm liking that. That's a lot of power coming from just lava, like free energy here. And these should maintain and continue to, to work for us. And it's also going to power the pulverizer in this machine. All of which should be very easy to handle very soon. Awesome. Um, so what we could do is pull out all of these things that need to be processed. Um, and we could probably get that done as well. Where we can have all of this set to be auto-processed. Uh, the few things that need to be auto-processed is this powder uranium, and all nine of these ores. That shouldn't be a hard task to do, I don't think. Uh, we should be able to use Ender.io and make sure that uh, only specific items can go in here. Uh, but a lot of things can go in here. We'll have to use filters, and Ender.io filters... are paper and hopper. That's actually not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a hopper. And we'll do some paper. That'll give us a filter. That should be exactly what we need to complete the next task. And that is going to be automating our ore. Automating this ore over here. Alright, so we have this hole back here. And we need to clear out this hole. So I'm going to go ahead and break this right here. And we're going to route this down and probably under the this this uh, section here All right I need to go down a couple because we're gonna have to I'll show you uh, Ender IO is a little finicky on how it how it does its stuff but you can see it's gonna attach to each one of these machines when you just go in here and turn the extract off or if you have a Yetta hammer or Yetta wrench you can just right click it and it'll disappear for us awesome we don't even want it here so we're gonna have to get in here somehow uh, can we stand here it's a bummer that we have to be able to get in here like that oh man probably go under be faster what we're gonna do is remove that I mean we could extract we could insert it directly but I don't think I want to do that so I'm just gonna remove it And from here, we can just clean this up. Perfect. Remove the extract from this. We have one last thing. And that is, we're going to have to set up our drawer here. This. Which, actually, I probably need to get back under here again. What did I do here? I already, locked, I already put myself in a hole. Alright. So... Let's go ahead and get our crate placed in. This is where we're actually going to have to get underneath here. And this is a big mess because we got to remove all of these from here. Extract. This one's going to be a little bit different. This is going to end up being an insert, but we need to get a filter on here. And this is the insert filter, actually. Let's see if I can't get it. There we go. So there's actually a filter that we can use for the inserting of items. This filter is very small, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be fun. How many slots was that? Let's see. What is the advanced filter? Yeah, that's going to take too much. And I don't think you can put a filter inside of a filter. Bummer. So some of the main things. I want this to be auto-smelted. I definitely want iron, copper, lead, gold, Iron, copper, lead, and gold. That's like our that's our whole filter. That is our entire filter, guys. Copper, lead. I wonder if we can do X and high low as chunks, like match metadata. Ignore metadata. We can do uranium grit. I wonder if this will actually work. Does these technically have metadata, I think? We'll have to see when we turn this on. So, 
we'll do extract, always active. Up here, we'll do insert. And we'll just see. Is that just going to pull iron out? I think it will. Uh, if it only pulls iron out, then we'll know. It's pulling grit. Ah, it's pulling out our iron pieces because because of the filter setting. So that we cannot have. That has to have metadata on. Copper and gold. Bummer. We'll have to set this up differently though. Uh, we could do it another way. Um, we can filter another one and have this actually insert into this and we can add another filter so that way certain items can go to it. Or we can have another thing come up and have it going in here and have a filter on it as well. Kind of a bummer that that's how we have to do it. There are other methods that we could use, but I think they would be pretty slow at pulling the items out. Hmm. Because these like other filters could be way better. Like These filters are huge. Hmm. Do I want to go that route, though? It's pretty slow. Pretty slow. I don't know. We're going to stick with this for right now. I guess if we need to change the filter, we can always change it. It's just a bummer that that's how it has to be. For right now. Anyways. Just for right now. So, that advanced collector that we set up a while ago over here. Let's see. How much do we have? Wow. We've got plenty of material built up. Looks like some things got picked up whenever we were clearing out our farm. But we got plenty of eggs now. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy. Uh, that's just from our couple chickens that's been sitting here. There are other ways to get your eggs... You can slap a book on these guys, they'll turn into a smart chicken, they'll only produce uh, eggs, and you can actually upgrade them to a 10-10-10 smart chicken, and they'll just constantly produce eggs after eggs after eggs, if that's what you want to do. Um, but I'm not too concerned about that. What I want to do today, uh, before we dive into chickens or anything like that, is I want to get my mob farm automated. And it's not, actually, it's not too difficult to do that. <laughs> it's really not. Uh, what we're going to need, though, is a bit of iron. There are a few things you can do. We have mob grinding utils in here. Um, this does require a bit of diamond to get this thing set up, but once you have it set up, it's really nice. It is really nice. Uh, let's see, how many diamonds do we have? We have, I think we have no, uh, just enough. Nice. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna need a few swords. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And how many was it for this two? It's quite a few, <laughs> quite a few blocks of iron as well. We need one, two, three. Three blocks of iron, so a lot of iron in this. Three blocks of iron, and a block of redstone, which we may or may not have. Looks like we do, we have just enough. And last but not least, we need to make these things. Two blocks of the iron spikes, and we can make the mob masher. Now the mob masher is very useful because we can upgrade this thing. And that's what we're gonna be end up, that's what we're gonna end up doing. Uh, first, we need to get this guy, get this all cleared out here. Let's get it all cleared out for right now. Bam, bam, bam. Come on, guys. Bam. Let's get you all cleared out. And we're going to use a crate for this as well. Perfect. So let's pick up all of our good old loot. And we're going to get a very, very simple mob killing machine set up here. So let's get a lever, because this is going to require a lever. That's going to be used to activate this, this bad boy. And uh, we're going to need to place this in our, our farm. I want to place it like right here. Awesome. So we, we need to remember that location. It's right in the center. Which means that this location here needs a lever on it to activate. And if we take a look with that activated, we should be able to see the spinning. Look at that. Look at it spinning like that. So now we need to get mobs into this area and also get a crate for it. So, crate. Do we have crates? Why do I have facades showing up? <laughs> so, Storage crate. Can I make one? Probably not. I'm probably missing like everything required for this. 
Nope, I have one. Okay, perfect. Break that. This is going to be very temporary. Let's place our torch here. We don't need it right there. I'm going to place this collector right there. We're going to bump up the radius on this bad boy to 777. That should be plenty. And uh, yeah, now all we got to do is get something to push our mobs. And there's fans for that. There's several different kinds of fans. We have these cyclic fans, which are really powerful. Um, and actually aren't that expensive. We also have fans from Chisel, which, I mean, they are open blocks. They do work, but they're not the greatest. And we also have the fans here. These require a lot of redstone. I think I'm going to go with this version. Uh, the cyclic fans. I really want to try those out. Let's see how much redstone we have. 22. That's quite a bit, actually. Um... These, by default, only have, I think, a push of three by default. So we need something that's going to push a little bit more. This pushes 16 blocks by default. I like that recipe. Let's go to make two of these fans. And we'll see how this, this works. Um, I've not really used these, so it's going to be interesting to see how exactly they work. So there's that one, there's that one, and they are on the inside, um, and we can make it not require redstone. And I don't think we'll, we will be affected by it. I don't think so. So that's uh, always on, you can show the, the preview of the area, it'll puff where we see the preview. Control the range. Let's see. We are one, two, three, four, five. So four blocks, maybe? And then control the speed. We can do five. Push, pull. Oh, we can do... We can actually make it pull. That's kind of cool. We could technically pull it to this if we wanted to. But yeah, we're going to push, though. And that should be always on now. Do the same here. Five blocks. Keep it at five. And I don't know if we're going to need another set. We might. It all depends. But what we can actually put here is probably a spike. If uh, need be. Uh, for the other side. Just to make sure. There are some spikes that we can make. These iron spikes. Powered by redstone. Damage on contact. Then we have these, powered by redstone, kills, give experience, and player drops. Ooh. I don't want experience, though. Not yet. And then these are iron bars, which are not what we want. It says, we'll drop mob experience. Mobs killed by spikes do not count as player kills. And then we have these iron spikes here. I think these are cheaper. Hmm. I'm going to try these. Powered redstone damage on contact. I've never used these, so we'll have to see how that works. Um, and then I also, I guess, need a lever. Because if I want this to function properly... Oh, look, we're already getting mobs killed in here. Look at that. <laughs> nice. But just to be on the safe side... I'm going to place spikes there. And I guess a lever? No. How are those going to work? Powered by redstone. Damage on contact. I think we can move this back. Let's move it to here. Away from everything. There we go. Then we can actually set this up. Oh. Does it need to be toggled on and off? Maybe not. It does say damage on contact. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That's kind of cool, actually. 
Well, anyways, that's technically an automated mob farm. <laughs> technically. Um, they will move around in there and most likely will get sucked into the center. And while we stand over here, they will just generate and die to the machines. So as of right now, our mobs are being crushed. It did add two more fans, but this is honestly not enough automation, I don't think. I think we need to go a little bit deeper. And so what I've done is I've set up some drawers and we're gonna get our mob farm set up so that way it sends items from our mob farm to this room which has our drawers in it. And this right here is where I want my mob items to be collected in. So for that I need a controller. So let's get a drawer controller. I should have, I guess I need a, what, a couple more redstone torches. So there we go. A few more redstone torches. And it should use a drawer. And there we go, there's our drawer controller. So we place that in here. That is all fine and dandy. Um, but we need something else, and that is a node. And this one's for items. And this is really nice, because uh, of course we need the same little setup here. So we need still need some torches. Let's grab some more redstone. Make a redstone block. And we need two, uh, not nether brick, we need two diamonds for this and a gold block. So let's go ahead and make a gold block. And we need some iron bars, which we should technically have, I think. Oh, maybe not. Probably used them all. And there we go. And then we're also going to need a GPS. So let's go ahead and make a GPS. And there we go. Perfect. So this crate that we have set up, yeah, we can remove this. We don't need this crate. It's super bulky, in the way, not really worth our time. Instead, I'll place down a node. On top of that, we can place this and increase our range. And then in here, we can place that GPS, but we need to set the GPS first. And that GPS is going to link to this drawer controller. And so basically, this should be pretty much set up. Now, when mobs are killed, their items will instantly be teleported into there and instantly be pushed into the drawer. And yeah, we should start seeing stuff in here before long. As soon as any mobs get killed or any mobs start spawning, um, it should auto fill this and we should be ready to go. So there we go. It looks like our first, <laughs> I want to see if these stack, but it looks like our first skeleton has been killed. Looks like, oh, we're getting more and more stuff building up in here as we move away. Look at that. So as this stuff starts to build up, it should fill out this. Then we can lock it. I just want to see if these stack inside the drawers. Um, because if these loot chests stack, that would be really, really nice. If not, we're going to figure it out. But I think they will because it's a random chance. So each chest technically should be the same chest. It's just when you open them, it's a random chance. So they should stack. I hope. I hope. <laughs> uh, but anyways, this has been running for a little bit. Um, we've got quite a few things going now. The only thing we need to do, I think, is going to be upgrade this and also figure out how to get experience out of the uh, the farm because right now we're generating experience. So there's a couple of things we can do to do this and probably the experience pylon would be the easiest, but as you can see, it's going to require a few materials that we don't really have just yet. One being slot or one being uh, vines. Um, and I think we can get vines if we can get lucky and make an area big enough to grow. Well, I don't know. Does let's see. I, you would think that the hopping bonsai would grow vine, like give you vines if you grew. Huh, but I guess not. I think nature seeds are probably the best option and we don't have access to those yet. Interesting. Yeah, we don't have access to them. 
So the, the only way we can probably get them is by clearing out a large enough area and having a large enough area cleared out above that we could grow a jungle sapling. And I don't think we have any jungle saplings laying around. Or enough? We do. We have nine. So that should be plenty. Uh, we just really need to clear this area out. So I'm going to get this cleared out. I'm going to see how tall I can get this. And then we're going to try it out. Oh my gosh. It actually grows. And look at how the leaves generate at the top. That is hilarious. Look at these vines. Oh man, that's probably the easiest way to get vines, by the way. Oh, that's so good. Um, let's take some of this. Let's get two shear, or just get a shear. And we'll just collect some vines. Nice. Look at that. Look at all these vines. And yeah, now we just have to chop down this tree, which is absolutely massive. And hope that everything f falls down. Yeah, that's how big we needed the roof to be in order to get this, tree, this sapling to spawn. Oh, man. But it does grow vines, which is great. Because now we can use these. Awesome. So now we have a chance of actually making this experience pylon. Uh, and let's just see. Let's just be, see how hard this is, or how hard this is actually going to be to make. So there's that. We need some lime dye. Which, take a step back. Lime dye is going to be cactus green. Which I'm actually not, I've not cooked cactus, surprisingly. And that will get us the dye for that. There it goes. Perfect. And we need nether brick, which I think we have nether rack, right? Two pieces of that. Go ahead and throw that in there, because we... This is our main furnace here, but it's also being utilized, so... Might as well have some other kind of furnace to help cook things. We haven't gotten lucky and gotten any kind of, like furnace reward or anything like that so unfortunately that's the best we can do what other things we need just gold and a hopper right so let's make a hopper we have everything else there's our two nether brick and last but not least we need to charge it looks like our tablet's out of power and we should be able to make this thing Look at that. Awesome. So here is our experience pylon. And this is going to collect the experience that is being dropped over here. So we don't really have to worry about it too much. And it's in collect orbs right here. If we set it to spray orbs, it'll you can spray out the orbs and give it to us. Um, or we can actually like put our stuff in at experience. So like we if we have our experience on us, we can throw it all in there. So there's actually experience in, in there. And yeah, we can drain it all out if we want. And later on, we can come back and collect it. Really, really nice. And this is going to also pull in stuff because you can see here, collects nearby experience orbs, then releases, uh, then release or bottle them for later. Nice. Very, very useful. Um, the dirt. Yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to stay here. It's yeah. You need a torch. By the way, you can use this to search inside here. Very handy. But yeah, like I said, this is not gonna not gonna stay. We have our wood and stuff that we need to put this back in in order and everything. Um, and then our cobblestone. Yeah. I guess I'm missing a piece. There we go. This time I won't put the crafting table. I'm not worried about that just yet. But anyways, look at this. What is this thing? What is this? It's glowing. Oh, it's a clay loot crate. Well, guys, we just got some clay. But anyways, I, I can't tell if these are building up. But look at that. We have an ender pearl. Oh, this is nice. Um, which also means we can probably take some of our mob drops that we have in here. And we can probably store them in this and give us easy access whenever we absolutely need it so yeah look at that we can store some of that in there 
And then plus it'll save us space inside here. Which, you know, we need. The thing that's going to be clutter is going to be these these the armor pieces. And the armor pieces, I assume, is probably going to build up in here. Um, I can almost guarantee that that's probably going to happen. But yeah, anyways, this is awesome. We've got an automated mob farm, and we upgraded our power today. Guys, man, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Oh, man. I've been really enjoying this playthrough so far. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. I really do appreciate it. You guys are absolutely amazing. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.